Hello everyone. I just want to say good morning to you and tell you how much I have missed you in Sunday school. So I would like to say hi to Rosalind and Brooklyn, Keaton and Kendon, Malachi and KJ and Titan and all the others that come through my Sunday school class. I'm hoping that we'll be able to be together again soon. But since we've been apart for so long, I wanted to share a Bible story with you this morning. And I'm going to be using our flannel graph that we started in this year. And today we're going to tell a special story about Jesus and a Roman centurion. Now Jesus had been teaching, traveling around the country and teaching to the people healing people that were sick, you can sit down here, and he was working miracles, and as he traveled around and visited different cities, there was a city named Capernaum that he visited, and no doubt this centurion had heard Jesus' teaching. A centurion is someone that's over 100 soldiers. And he is in charge of a hundred soldiers. So he was probably the most important Roman soldier in this town. And it was his job to make sure that everyone stayed peaceful and that there was no rebellion against the Roman government. So no doubt when Jesus was teaching, the Roman soldier was probably standing around on the edges watching and listening because sometimes people would come around and stir the people up and tell them, to fight back against Rome and try to get free from Rome. Well, it was his job to make sure that didn't happen. But as he listened to Jesus teach and preach, he noticed that Jesus taught different things. Jesus taught about loving your neighbor. Jesus taught about loving God. Jesus taught about doing good to everyone, even your enemies. And the Roman centurion knew that he would have no trouble out of someone like Jesus. In fact, he began to believe the words that Jesus was teaching, and he started to have faith in Jesus and in his ministry. So when you have faith, that's when you believe in something. Now this Roman centurion, he had a family and a home there because it was his job to stay here at this post in Capernaum. So we're going to change scenes here and go back to the centurion's house and find out what's going on in his house. Let's see if we can pull our scene over. Let's travel inside his house. See, maybe we need a door. Put a door up there. And let's put a window over here looking outside. There we go. That's starting to look more like a house. We'll put a table with a nice little plant on it. And then let's put a bed over here. Finally, we've got someone who's laying on this bed. And now we're going to bring the Roman centurion in here. Now, the Roman centurion, when he came to his home, he found that one of his faithful servants and workers around the house was very sick. He was so sick that the centurion was worried about him because he didn't want him to die. The centurion was not a mean person. He was a kind person, and he cared about his, his servants. So as the centurion was thinking about his servant and really worried about him, something came to his mind, and he remembered Jesus. He had seen Jesus heal people, he had seen Jesus work miracles. He knew that Jesus cared about people. And he thought, if I could just get this Jewish leader to come, I think he could heal my servant. 
But the centurion, even though he was a big, important man, he did not feel like he was important enough that he could go and talk to Jesus by himself. So he called some Jews that were leaders in the synagogue locally. He called them in to his house. So they came as soon as he called them. And he explained to him what was going on. And he said, my servant's so sick and I'm just worried about him. I don't think there's anything the doctors can do for him. But I really think that Jesus could help him. That's who I think could help him. Do you two think that you could go and take a message for me and ask Jesus if he would heal my servant? And the two Jewish leaders looked at each other and they liked the centurion because he had been very good to them. And we'll find out a little bit more. They told Jesus some of the good things he had done for them. They said, why, yes, anything we can do to help you out. We know that you've helped us out and, and we're just glad you care about your servant. We'll go see if we can find where Jesus is today and we'll give him your message. So straight away, the two Jewish leaders left. Let's see. Let me take this down. I'll have to come back to this a little bit later. So, these two Jewish men went out, walking around the town. Finally, they saw a crowd of people, and they knew that's where Jesus was. So they came on up to the middle of the crowd, said, Jesus, Jesus, do you have a moment? Speak to us. We have an important message. So Jesus turns around and says, yes, what do you need? They said, we just come with a message from the local centurion of our town. And he's a good man, Jesus. He has built synagogues for us. He has helped out our people. We really appreciate how he has conducted himself in our town. And now he's in trouble and one of his servants is sick. And he says that if you could come, that we believe that you could heal his servant. So Jesus thought about this and he said, well, yes, I believe I will. I sure will come with you. So Jesus left the crowd and he began to walk with these two men back toward the city. And as they got close to the city, into the house where the centurion lived, the centurion came outside and he came up to where Jesus was and he says, Oh, Jesus, you did come. Jesus says, Yes. What can I do for you? And the centurion says, Jesus, you don't even need to come all the way to my house. He said, I believe in you. I know that if you just say the word, my servant will be healed. There were some other people standing around listening. And Jesus said, I haven't seen this kind of faith anywhere in Israel. I preach to the Jews every day and they don't believe in me this strongly. The centurion says, well, I have servants and soldiers underneath me. And if I tell them to do something, I know that it's going to happen. If I tell them to go here, then they'll go. And if I tell them to come, then they'll come. And I believe that you have the power that if you tell this sickness to go, that my servant will be healed. So don't even trouble yourself to come to my house. If you say the word, then I know that my servant will be healed. And Jesus said, let it be unto you according to your faith. That means however you believe it to be, God can answer your prayer. So the centurion left and travel back to his home. When he got to his home and came in the door, what do you think he found? When he got home, his servant was feeling better. 
he wasn't feeling sick anymore. Pretty soon he woke up and he wanted something to eat. And before long, he was ready to go back to work for him. So in today's story, we want to remember how important it is for us to have faith in Jesus, that Jesus can do anything if we believe in him. And also to have faith to believe that he loves us and he wants to do good things for us. So you just remember that anytime you get in trouble or if you're sick, if you're lonely, if you're sad, you just pray to Jesus and ask him to help you and believe that he will help you because Jesus can do anything. All right, let's end up with a little song. It's a chorus of a song and it says, who can do, who can do, who can do anything? Nobody but my Lord and Master. Now, who are we talking about? We're talking about Jesus, like in our story. Who can do anything? Jesus is the one that can do anything. So help me sing this little song. Who can do, who can do, who can do anything? Nobody but my Lord and Master. Who can do, who can do, who can do anything? Nobody but my Lord. Okay, let's sing it one more time and you try to sing it with me this time. Who can do, who can do, who can do anything? Nobody but my Lord and Master. Who can do, who can do, who can do anything? Nobody but my Lord.